Good afternoon in Shanghai and good morning in Switzerland. Welcome to our Art Science Dialogues, Shaping the Art Science Collaborations. My name is Sisi Sun, the Head of Art Science at SwissNext in China. As I see quite a lot of new names joining us today, I'll give a brief introduction of our organization before we start. SwissNext in China is the Science Consulate of Switzerland in China. As part of the SwissNext Global Network, we connect Switzerland, China, and the world in science, research, education, and innovation. Our mission is to support the outreach and active engagement of our partners in the international exchange of knowledge, ideas, and talent. The six main SwissNext locations are established in some of the world's most innovative regions, Boston, Brazil, China, India, Japan, and San Francisco. SwissNext is an initiative of the State Secretary for Education, Research, and Innovation of Switzerland and is part of the Swiss Confederation's network abroad managed by the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs. The webinar today is part of our Art Science Dialogues initiated in 2020. This series not only presents artistic projects, which scientists and researchers are deeply involved in, but also looks into new initiatives and trends. Through the dialogues between artists, scientists, and curators, we try to stimulate the exchange of ideas between the two different worlds and explore opportunities for collaborations. In this edition of Art Science Dialogue, we will invite Ms. Monica Bello, Head of Arts at CERN, and Professor Zhao Chao, Associate Dean of the Academy of Arts and Design at Tsinghua University to join the conversation. We will have a discussion session after the presentations, and the discussion will also open to the audience at the end. So for our online audience, if you have any questions during the webinar, please type your questions in the Q&A box. We will select and answer the questions in the Q&A session. The webinar today will last about one hour, and we will share the video recording and the slides to all the registered guests by email afterwards. Now let's welcome our first speaker, Ms. Monica Bello. Monica currently directs the Arts at CERN program at the European Center for Nuclear Research in Geneva, where she is in charge of research-oriented artist residencies and new art commissions that reflect on conversations and interactions between artists and particle physics professionals. Now let's hear more from Monica. Good morning. Thank you, Sissy, and uh, thank you, the, the team of Swiss Next, for the invitation. Um, I'm going to speak about my work uh, at CERN, and, uh, but briefly, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a curator. I've worked for the last almost 20 years in art and science uh, collaborations. Uh, in all the in the broader sense, what that means, what is a collaboration, a dialogue, an exchange, or an influence, uh, inspiration that uh, and the effect that uh, um, that one person from a discipline can have to another creative mind. Um, I uh, in the past I work uh, closely with uh, social science scientists and. Uh, um, scientists working with life science, and uh, and uh, uh, I, I curate programs in which um, they uh, engage into dialogue with cultural centers, uh, artistic communities, to understand the emergent phenomena in our society. And um, since 2015, um, I'm working as head and curator of Arts at CERN. Arts at CERN is the um, uh, art program of the of the CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, and this is what I will um, explain to you today. Uh, I, I'm going to start my presentation. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. Sure. I'm going to start my presentation by explaining you or yeah, in, introducing you to CERN. CERN is uh, the uh, a laboratory, the largest laboratory dedicated to particle physics in the world. 
and uh, is a uh, um, um, uh, big community of particle physicists, uh, engineers, um, IT um, scientists and staff. Um, altogether, we are more than 10,000 people working uh, in an area which is uh, close to Geneva and uh, France. So it's, um, uh, it's a territory that is next to the to the Jura Mountains, as you will see here. Here we have the Jura Mountains. This is the Lake of Geneva and CERN is all, everything that you see around this invisible uh, circle, which is the Large Hadron Collider. This is Switzerland, the south, well, south of the picture. Next is the airport of Geneva. And um, this large territory is France. So we are um, um, a, a laboratory that occupies um, yeah, land in, in, different, uh, in two different countries. Uh, CERN uh, started in the 50s as a, a with uh, a goal, understanding and experimenting and creating technology that uh, respond to the, uh, to at that time, the challenges of physics, the theoretical models, the thinking behind everything that was being discovered or spread about physics uh, was, um, uh, was um, uh, needing uh, experimentation and uh, some began out of this uh, demand, the, the, there was a, um, this was a really important moment for Europe as well, and uh, many countries in the region um, uh, arranged this um, model of collaboration that uh, allowed to further uh, scientific research in the heart of Europe. Uh, today, um, we are, as I said before, a vast community, but at the very beginning, there were only a few hundred people working um, at the CERN, and, um, and the territory expanded because the uh, experiments became bigger, and the, the science uh, became very diversified. So today, we have the Large Hadron Collider, which responds to um, this necessity of understanding an experiment uh, about the big question, what is matter? What are the um, fundamental constituents of uh, everything we see, we touch, everything we are made of, and, the, uh, and how the universe was made uh, at the beginning. And uh, so scientists at CERN study the element the elementary building blocks, as we call it, of matter and the forces that uh, bring um, them together and control their behavior. And as uh, and if you spend time at CERN, you as a curator, as myself or as an artist, um, it's easy to um, engage with this language and understand the family of particles and the challenges of uh, revealing new behaviors uh, between them and among them, and from matter to electron to a nucleus, the proton, the quark, and many more. And the scale of them is something that becomes part of yeah, your vocabulary and language. So um, the origin of the universe is something uh, that Scientists at CERN look and uh, the Big Bang, this very beginning of the, of the universe is uh, the focus of uh, most of the research. So what you uh, see at the Big Bang is the beginning of everything as we know it. And then when there is planetary objects, um, this is the land of astronomy. So uh, particle physics deals with Big Bang and everything that is unseen to us. And there are so many unknowns and ways to detect what happened there. So um, in the Large Hadron Collider, uh, scientists had um, 
work with um, the conditions of this fraction of a second after the Big Bang, and they reproduce that, uh, that phenomena in the Large Hadron Collider uh, to gain an insight into the structure and this evolution of the universe. And um, the, there is huge um, and um, beautiful and uh, incredible <laughs> machines that detect these moments, these collisions in the experiments and take what we could uh, call an image of these moments. And um, this helps the scientists uh, to understand the, the evolution of the universe. So this is the Large Hadron Collider inside of a tunnel of 27 kilometers in a circumference. The, the Large Hadron Collider sits in, uh, in this underground tunnel, which is in parts uh, is uh, as much as 100 meters underground. Some places is a bit less than that. Um, the technology used is the most advanced technology and materials. They are superconducting magnets steering the particles around the ring, and the particles are accelerated to close to the speed of light. So um, with, with these um, conditions of uh, experimentation and science, it's not rare that artists from the beginning of the laboratory have been interested in understanding what was going on there. Um, today, we live in unprecedented times when we have so much knowledge. But um, even in the 50s and the 60s, the artists were considering these theoretical models as an inspiration for um, the, 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 the creations, the expressions they were um, developing. Um, Technology is deployed today in places like CERN in the most extraordinary way. And the amount of data that the, these experiments are giving us is, is the largest we could ever imagine. Processing this data is also uh, very challenging, but there is a huge effort in the developing um, um, uh, computing systems to understand what is happening. And we know that many artists engage with technology. They are not only getting inspiration for anything that might be happening in laboratories like CERN, but also they put their hands in the technology and the data mostly. And um, so there is this, uh, from the beginning of the, the laboratory, there was this performative approach to to, to the place, to the construction, to, to the community. And we see this uh, the, in our archives. We had uh, James Lee Byers coming to the laboratory in the 1973 and pointing out to the sky and to the land and wondering what was um, happening in this um, very uh, dynamic side of uh, research. Um, today, uh, we have artists visiting the detectors as this image you are seeing of Thomas Struth. He took this image in the Alice experiment, one of the detectors of the uh, Large Hadron Collider, to understand the complexity and the precision needed to, um, to, to uh, make sense of, what, uh, of the signals of nature and how uh, experiments are essential for understanding them. Um, but what is art satsang and how we began? Uh, we, uh, we, we, we own uh, to the work of many artists that have uh, been pushing the, the trigger to, to do the connection. So artists, as I said, as James Lee Byers, Amsel Kiefer, um, and many, many more artists uh, have came to the lab before arts at San started, but we knew that uh, we had to answer to them and to create a structure, uh, a program that responded to, um, what, to, to the conditions of working and research that they needed to welcome them to the lab. So since 2012, we are the arts program of the lab, 
and our uh, goal is to foster dialogue between art and physics. And we are based on, our, on the CERN's cultural policy. Arts at CERN is the program of the laboratory and we are part of uh, the um, department the, the, uh, of um, ECHO, which responds to education, communication and outreach. And we are part, uh, and this is uh, with us, we are part of the uh, Directorate of International Relations. But uh, our day uh, today activities are based on um, understanding the laboratory, what scientists are doing, and how this can be an opportunity for artistic research. Our goals are to inspire significant exchanges between art and physics and inform exchanges to give the tools to the artists and to allow them to participate in this international community, cultural community that is eager to connect with CERN and uh, with the scientific community of CERN. So um, how we do it? We have three strands in our program uh, from 2012 to 2015. Uh, our program was uh, mostly artistic residencies and uh, guest artist uh, visits. And uh, since the beginning, we had, uh, well, today we might have more than 200 artists in the program, uh, 400 or more artists, uh, scientists involved. We receive uh, many applications every year in each of our residency programs and uh, from um, a, a very large number of countries. Then we have since 2018, um, we began a bit earlier, but since 2018, we have a program as in our structure that is focusing on supporting the uh, creation of new artworks. This is, um, we, we support around two uh, new artworks every, every year. And uh, usually these artworks are seen, uh, can be known um, by visitors to museums that are hosting these artworks, uh, museums with um, which we have collaborations or museums who are co-producing these art commissions with us. And there are different models for supporting uh, creation of new artworks. And that we are always, um, yeah, uh, keen to yeah, explore. Um, we have exhibitions and events uh, in 2018 to 2020, before the pandemic started. We had a touring exhibition called Quantum, Broken Symmetries. Um, uh, this exhibition went to uh, five different countries in Europe and Asia. Uh, in parallel, we run uh, in collaboration with institutions uh, events every year on education, public programs, and uh, we engage in conferences and seminars where either uh, the artist or myself or the scientist will um, uh, participate with our model and uh, discuss uh, topics of art and science as we I'm doing now with you. The residencies are run in partnerships. We believe that um, the model of science is a perfect model that we need to yeah, follow and we adopted from the beginning. So our, large, our international program is in collaboration with cities. Every three years, we change the cities. We start in Linz, we follow with Liverpool, Barcelona, and from November, from uh, sorry, uh, January 2023, we will um, run uh, the Collide program with Copenhagen. We have a program in collaboration with Prelvecha in which we engage with other uh, parts of uh, cosmos sciences and physics in collaboration with observatories or laboratories in, in the South Globe. And uh, we had an amazing program with Al Alma Iso in Chile, South Africa last year with Sarao and Sahao. This year, we are opening a collaboration with ICTS in Bangalore, in India, and uh, in the uh, following uh, years, it will be with Brazil. So this uh, connect allows artists to exchange residencies in these regions 
they come to Sun and then they go to the to the laboratory for a few weeks. Our community is the sense of everything we do. Uh, we couldn't uh, develop our activities without the support and the involvement of many scientists uh, in our lab and, um, and as part of our alumni. Um, and we often ask them, uh, so what do you think about the, this uh, exchange with artists? And uh, we realized that uh, most of the, the input uh, we get is this qualitative, this perception of, of oneself's work, what what means to work in a community, what is the meaning of uh, the research, the synergies of the lab, this yeah, understanding the creativity in science. And, and this is a really interesting approach. And for us, it's a very rewarding um, aspect of our work. So uh, Chiara Mariotti says that working with artists reminds me of the purpose of what I do and reinvigorates the determination towards fundamental research. Alessandra Necki, a theoretical physicist, she was with us until recently, and now is, she is in the Max Planck Institute. She says that an artist can shock us with perspectives that challenge our logical view, but they offer our mind a chance to escape from the rules of physics and find creative ways to approach our research. And Regis Alemani says, working with artists allows me to convey my passion for science in the artistic realm. So I, I'm often asked about what the scientists get from this exchange. And of course, an artist is not going to help them with understanding the, the Higgs boson or discovering something new, but this is the, and the power of curiosity and, and the, the, the creativity that uh, brings these two worlds together. We do outreach through an engagement through the arts. It's not our uh, focus, but we know that we have an impact in how people think or talk or imagine what science is about. And a good example is the Alice exhibition in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, in which we um, presented two art commissions. And we had a really nice collaboration with the museum in uh, its educational programs uh, in 2021. And uh, was uh, yeah, amazingly attended with uh, students and teachers from everywhere. Mm, what else? Yeah, and just to finish with what is going on today, our big new project. So Arts at CERN is now part of CERN Science Gateway, uh, Gateway and, um, and this is a new uh, education and outreach center opening in 2023 in June. Uh, there will be art exhibitions, science exhibitions, education labs and events, and uh, new art commissions from artists who were uh, in residency uh, at Art Satsang will be um, uh, created and they will be in the they will be featured in the in the exhibition. So I hope if you come to CERN in the new year, uh, after June, you, you can see our uh, exhibitions and um, spend time with us at CERN, uh, Science Gateway. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Monica, for your great presentation. Very looking forward to visit your new center. Um, so, uh, as mentioned previously, uh, we will have the Q&A session at the end, but for our audience, if you already have questions now or during the presentation, please feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A box. Now let's move on to our second speaker, Professor Zhao Chao. Professor Zhao is the Associate Dean of the Academy of Arts and Design at Tsinghua University, and he is also the Vice President of the International Council of Design, as well as the Associate Dean of Tsinghua Qingdao Academy of Arts and Science Innovation Research. Now let's welcome Professor Zhao. 
Hello and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for the all online participants. So, so just uh, I'm going to share my uh, screen. Uh, so, yeah. So. Uh, the topic of my presentation is uh, uh, designing a future paradigm, the uh, collaborative innovation between art and uh, science. Uh, actually, uh, with the change of the social cultural context with the uh, industry age to the post-industry age, uh, the design paradigm transfer from the technology and the product innovation to business and the service innovation. Uh, however, uh, this pandemic changed the world already. Uh, as everybody, uh, everybody know that. Uh, the question is uh, uh, how COVID-19 might change the design in the future. Uh, I thought that uh, the design will transfer from the commercial oriented value to the human and the society centered paradigm to rebuild the new order of the global connection, collaboration and uh, innovation. So according to International Council of Design, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, the design is uh, uh, can be defined as a discipline of study and practice uh, focus, uh, fo uh, focus on the interaction between persons and uh, man-made environment, taking into account aesthetics, uh, functionals, uh, contextual, cultural, and uh, societal consideration. As a formalized uh, discipline, design is a, a modern construct so artifacts transactor uh, will transfer from the functional product to the meaningful system and the social impact with a uh, sustainable way. Uh, designer have to uh, improve the social innovation paradigm to develop a product, service, interface, project, multi-user system for the social inclusive uh, growth. Uh, I think the, uh, according to Nigel Cross, uh, he defined design as an interdisciplinary discipline. Design is to connect all branches of the disciplines, uh, reach uh, consensus, create new knowledge to re-understand really the designing. Design is a complexity management as well. Uh, according to Don Norman, complexity is a reality of the world. Uh, technology must be complex to match the activity of the, our daily life. Uh, I think the complexity is not only in inevitable, but also a new starting point of design and the opportunity to solve the everyday uh, problems. A good designer must learn to manage uh, complexity and the management itself should become an integral part of uh, contemporary design. Uh, in 1970s, Victor Papanek published a book named the uh, Design for the Real World. Uh, this book called the designer to develop solutions to meet social needs like uh, designing for aging population, uh, disabled people, disaster, and uh, healthcare system, etc. Uh, nowadays, uh, I think design is uh, everywhere in the world. For example, in China, uh, there are around 1,000 design creative industry parks around the national wide, uh, 10,000 uh, design companies, 500,000 professional designers are working in the industries. Uh, we have around 30% uh, uh, annual growth rate of the patent uh, application. And there are around 2,000 design schools in China with 1 million students studying art and design in universities. I think it's no doubt that China has the largest volume of design industries and education in China, uh, I mean, the, in the world. Uh, there are few factors impact uh, on the development of art and design in China, such as uh, uh, consumer society, uh, urbanization, uh, max of uh, industry society and the post-industry society, uh, information technology impact our lifestyle, and of course, healthcare and the well-being uh, system. 
So earth discipline, uh, how can we define the body of knowledge of the future design? Uh, as a designer, I would like to visualize my thinking to interpret a different thought about these issues. Uh, some people thought that the designer should have an end shape of the multidisciplinary knowledge. Uh, on the other hand, X shape of the uh, cross disciplinary knowledge uh, focus on the integrating different, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, integrating different discipline on the one point, on, on the one cross point. Uh, o shape of the multidisciplinary knowledge try to inclusive everything into one discipline. Uh, H shape of interdisciplinary promote the vision of the original discipline by means of the design discipline. So in this presentation, I'd like to introduce the platform program and the project for the collaborative uh, for the collaboration between the art and the science conducted in Tsinghua University, especially from the design perspective. So firstly, I'd like to uh, talk about the platform. Uh, as a professor in Tsinghua University, I'd like to explore the, the future of the art and design education and practice in the post-COVID uh, COVID China by introducing the development of uh, Tsinghua design discipline here. Uh, like many, uh, many universities around the world, Tsinghua is uh, quite big and a multidisciplinary comprehensive university. It's uh, uh, consists of 20 schools and uh, 58 departments with faculties in science, engineering, humanities, uh, business, uh, and art and science, uh, etc. We have a total around uh, 14,000 staff members and uh, uh, 47,000 students uh, are studying in campus. The Academy of Art and Design in Tsinghua University is, uh, is established in 1956. It's the earliest design school in China. And uh, there are around 10 departments in the school, which include uh, uh, ceramic design, fashion design, industry design, environmental design, visual communication, painting, sculpture, etc. Uh, under the umbrella of uh, Academy of Art and Design, we develop an important platform named the Art and Science Innovation Research Institute. Uh, this slide showed the campus of the institute, which included museum, research studios, uh, laboratories, and uh, incubator hubs, etc. The institute is uh, committed to four areas of research, uh, which include the product design in, uh, for the information age, environmental design for the urban and rural development, uh, uh, social design aimed at the healthy and the inclusive growth, and uh, art and the design based on the cultural heritage transformation. Through linking and collaborating with the local and the international industries, the research institute is going to build uh, uh, world-class research and development incubation and their service in the design innovation domain. The Institute is committed to the generation of new knowledge, uh, the cultivation of the innovation leading talents, uh, the response to the challenge of globalization and the promotion of the sustainable and the healthy development of society. Through the integration of the art and the science, the Institute is going to promote the collaborative innovation of the culture and technology, university and the industries, talent cultivation and the social needs, enterprise and the industry, et cetera. The research institute, we are, in the research institute, uh, we are developing uh, six research categories, uh, which include the future transportation innovation center, future living innovation center, future fashion innovation center, future healthcare and the well-being innovation center and the future learning research center, of course, the culture, sustainable development research center, et cetera. Uh, we conduct the research and the practice in the five areas, uh, uh, to, uh, which include the design thinking training for the intellectual property trade and uh, transaction. So secondly, I'd like to introduce the program. 
as a co-founder and the chair professor, I develop a, a global innovation design program. Uh, we call it the GID program, which is a master program collaborated with the Royal College of Art and the Imperial College. Uh, so it's a new type of the multi culture and the multidisciplinary design education to develop creative leaders uh, through broad experience and understanding in design areas. Uh, GID partners are working together to develop a uh, curriculum and share value in different uh, cultural contexts. So in this case, RCA is a top one design school in the world and developed advanced uh, design thinking curriculum. Tsinghua is a large comprehensive university with the art and the design institute and facing a big design market. In Paris, develop a world leading uh, engineering disciplines. All partners will take advantage of these values each other to cultivate the future design leadership. So from, the, uh, from Chinese culture, uh, perspective, I developed a GID Tsinghua curriculum, which includes the three elements. First one is cultural transform uh, transformation design innovation. Second one is uh, social design. The third one is uh, uh, designed for the intelligent uh, or smart uh, manufacturer. GID program is going to uh, cultivate the leaders for the future innovation. Uh, I think there are 10 types of design innovation for the future. Uh, designing for the profit uh, model, network, structure, and uh, process, uh, build the business model-centric uh, uh, innovation. Designing for product performance and the product system, build the platform-centric innovation. Designing for service, branding, and customer engagement, build the experiment-centric uh, innovation. So I thought that the successful design innovation has to balance file more type of innovation and uh, uh, most importantly, all three colors uh, should be uh, involved. So last but not least, the, I talk about the project. The integration of the art and the science is an uh, essential uh, source of the innovation. I think the uh, science uh, disclosed the a secret of the universe. Art disclosed the secret of the emotion and their goals are both to pursue the, the truth of the world. Uh, as a, cu a, cu a curator, I conducted the fifth art and the science international exhibition and the conference in, 19, uh, in 2019. Uh, there are around uh, 200 artists and scientists from the, the modern 20 countries around the world participate in the, uh, this kind of event. So this event is providing an international exchange platform that is leading a, uh, and uh, even ahead of its time for artists, artists uh, designers, uh, engineers, and uh, scientists, uh, jointly launched by the Tsinghua University and the National Museum of China, and the same of AS, uh, Helix, uh, which is uh, the integration of the art and the science in the age of the artificial intelligence. For, for example, so I invite the world famous AI character, uh, Sophia, and her developer, Hansen Robotics, to participants in the event and uh, deliver the keynote speech between the robot and the human beings in the conference. So Sophia character is a uh, evolving science fiction character to explore the future of the AI and the lifelike human and to engage the public in the discussion of this kind of, uh, you know, the uh, issues. I'm working with uh, uh, Refix uh, to develop this organization. Uh, Named the Tsinghua University data set for this kind of uh, for this exhibition. Machine uh, hallucination Tsinghua is a time and space explanation to Tsinghua University architecture and uh, uh, cultural past and the potential future, which is exploring the university's uh, architecture through the mind of machine. So this is 
another project to shows in the uh, shows in the exhibition named as the virtual actors in China Opera and uh, Kung Fu Motion. This project fuses uh, Chinese opera and uh, Kung Fu with the new media. Uh, the virtual actors are inspired by shapes, colors, and motions of the traditional Chinese uh, costume and uh, dance. Uh, this project explores how costumes and motions have virtually reshaped of the human body. The Fairies in Night Scale is another project showing show in the uh, exhibition. The world of the chemistry is full of the colors and amazing with the all sorts of the wonders hidden inside the formulas. Uh, through working with the uh, photographer, the designer are able to appreciate the beauty of the chemistry reactions on the microscopic uh, level and uh, experience the uh, mysterious connection between the chemistry and the world. So this one is a hidden layer of the AI installation with endeavors to represent all the invisible uh, interconnected uh, structures, rules, and the pathways of the neural networks and the machine learning. It's another, you know, the project showing uh, in the exhibition. Through, explore, uh, through employing the cutting edge technology like AI and the biochip, I'm integrating the modern Western medicine and the traditional Chinese medicine together to develop a public health crisis detection AI network to predict the potential public health care crisis, uh, especially during the post COVID age. So, in conclusion, uh, according to the Bruce Archer, design is a third discipline different from the science and the arts. The science is uh, discovering the nature with the method like uh, experiment, induction, analysis. On the other hand, the art is uh, studying the human experience with the method like uh, uh, metaphor, evaluation, uh, and etc. However, the design is creating the artifact through the integrating the knowledge generated by the science and the arts and constructing the artifacts, which is a man-made world. So what will happen in the future of the post-COVID world? I think that it needs the uh, co-innovation and the contribution from the designers, artists, and the scientists. So I think that that's the, uh, the answer for, the, you know, the, for this kind of question. So that's to the end of my question, uh, end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Zhao, for very uh, for giving us the very comprehensive presentation and to introduce the platform, the program, and projects at Tsinghua University. And now I'd like to uh, invite Monica to turn on your video and we will um, go directly to the discussion session and also the Q&A from the audience. Um, so first of all, I would like to see if you have any questions to, to each other after the presentation. Professor Zhao, if you have any questions to Monica, or Monica, right. if you have any questions to uh, to Professor Zhao. So, uh, can I, uh, uh, I have a question for Monica. So I think to, uh, as a, a creator, uh, so uh, so how do you you know develop the, the uh, how can I say the language to communicate with the the, the scientists, especially for the uh, physics, because you know the uh multidisciplinary uh collaboration is a uh, uh, quite complicated uh, i mean quite uh, complicated uh, you know the process the so how uh, artist designers or co uh, creator uh 
can develop their uh, expertise to communicate with the scientists. It's a it's big challenge, I think. So how do <laughs> how do you know to develop your language uh, and the expertise? I think, hmm. I think um, so. If I if I get to quantify the amount of money of uh, time, sorry, not. <laughs> The of time I spent uh, doing, um, yeah, um, having conversations with our community. This is, this could be maybe eighty eighty percent of my time. It's very important to understand the science uh, and also to understand the the experiments. But the science is not a static uh, um, uh, activity. If you want, this something that is. Uh, in the um, constant development. So being in contact with um, the experiments is very important. Um, um, as a curator, I well, uh, I, um, I engage in many trainings. I do that because I think it's very important to understand what is happening in these scientific facilities and to and to spend time in them, understanding the even how to walk through a laboratory in a, and do what is safe, what is not, what kind of materials, this is very important. So spending time, engaging with what is happening there, having conversations with the scientists, um, being informed about the challenges, the status of the research, um, this is crucial to 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 curate art and science, and um, and and I I think uh, we are privileged at CERN because at CERN we have a, um, a philosophy of openness in in that way, so it's very important to be connected with other people. Otherwise, well, science could not happen really, and. Uh, so um, everyone at CERN is very keen to to share and to you know to spend time with you, and um, and for the same purpose, this is what we invite artists to do. So uh, when an artist arrives in uh, for a residency, we prepare a program of uh, exploration, which we know is going to might be confusing or maybe not, depending on the artist and the knowledge they have about the subject, but um, it's going to shake their preconceptions. And this is uh, an important um, yeah, condition to, to, to have in a residency. Um, another aspect, uh, I think, is the, is the timeline of uh, artistic research in a particular physics lab. Uh, so we support the artists with a minimum of yeah, a week or even three months residency, but we don't expect them to uh, adopt a new language, understand everything, know the, uh, learn or uh, yeah, have the connections, with the significant connections with this science, with this community in this small period. So we often keep this, um, yeah, the communication open with the, sign, uh, with the artist uh, so they can either come back or connect with other, uh, a laboratory that is close to them uh, or to engage with a, a, a a specific area of research that they discovered during the residency. So the residency as a model is, allows us to support the artists for a small period with a fully funded residency. But in, in reality, what we are doing is to create a community that is informed, can support each other, and can um, yeah, um, keep uh, yeah, this um, degree of um, interest and alertness about anything that is happening in this particular field. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. And I think it's really important for the curators like to, to act in between these two different communities and to, to uh, translate the needs of the different group and to bridge them. Um, so, uh, actually, for Professor Zhao, uh, I have a question about your uh, art science, uh, the International Art Science Exhibition. Uh, so, I guess the new uh, edition will be next year, right? And are there yes. any 
uh, themes you would like to focus on for the next edition? Oh, yeah, it's good questions. Actually, so the, 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 the theme uh, for the next uh, event, we are going to focus on the how the art and the science uh, can work together to focus on the, the um, I mean, the topic is uh, uh, metaverse. So the parallel, um, yes, it's a parallel uh, in the space uh, for the for the for the for the metaverse. So I think uh, uh, hopefully by the end of the that next year, uh, so we are going to conduct the six of the art and the science international exhibitions and uh, uh, conference. So uh, I would like to invite the old, uh, you know, the uh, audience. I mean, the old uh, artists and uh, scientists uh, around the world, so they can contribute something for this uh, big event. Thank you. We look forward to that. And we have some questions coming in now. So we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, so we have first one to uh, Ms. Bello. Uh, from Alexa, what would you like to do next with art at CERN that hasn't happened yet? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very broad question. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm totally yeah. <laughs> Lucky imagination here. We we haven't done everything we want because we are we try to be very yeah realistic of what we can do, but um. But we would like to see uh, yeah ah yes that's that's something that has been in our mind. Uh, so we have these international collaborations and this is how we run our programs because it's very important to understand science as a global network. And, uh, and uh, when I am with uh, um, colleague scientists and they often live after three, five years, seven years. And, uh, and you see, oh, okay, so where are you going? And they go to the Max Planck Institute, Niels Bohr, Fermilab, anywhere. And um, the importance of keeping them on the loop of what our activities and still involved is, yeah, is significant. Uh, so I think an uh, uh, international network of art and science initiatives is very important because this allows artists and designers to, you know, to connect with, yeah, the complexity of scientific research. Uh, from different perspectives and models. And yeah, this is what I would like to do. Thank you. And we have another question to both speakers from uh, Stephanie New. Uh, to both speakers, how would the art science collaborations benefit our society? <laughs> would you uh, like to go, Professor? Ciao. Ciao. Would you <laughs> go first? All right, sure. So, uh, so for my understanding, I think the um, the development of the uh, our society uh, is based on the <clears throat> uh, co innovation between the art and the science, which means uh, the multidisciplinary uh, collaboration is a, a key a point for the future innovation, uh, not only for the industry, but also for the uh, society. And, uh, you know, so I think the, uh, what we are going to do to promote the art and the science collaboration is uh, possibly we should uh, uh, develop a, a joint or establish a joint research platform to invite, uh, to, to put the uh, scientists uh, uh, and artists uh, uh, work together. So the other, I mean, uh, another uh, key point is a uh, project. So which is, uh, so we have to fund the, 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 the interesting project and also to get the fundings from the, in the government or, uh, or, or industries uh, to promote the, 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 the collaboration. 
Uh, so that's my uh, my thought. Thank you, Monica. I, and I I fully agree with uh, the importance of innovation, and I would add as well um, a more yeah philosophical approach to it. Uh, I think it's very important to understand that um, uh, creativity is is what makes us humans, this curiosity. And many of my colleagues and uh, artists and scientists um, have often expressed this in these terms. So why are we curious and why are we pushing always this, the boundaries of what we know? What, How do we uh, like to play about the idea of the unknowns and how to detect this? Uh, yeah, information that is missing. So, and then the power of storytelling. I think between uh, artists and scientists, you, I often see, um, yeah, this spark of, yeah, dreaming. And um, and I think this is very important for our society. We cannot stop dreaming and uh, imagining new scenarios in which things are, yeah, better. And uh, so I I think. Uh, trust, collaboration, hope. This is what art and science are giving us. Understanding that, well, um, science and art are, do, do not belong to anyone. They are planetary or human commons because it's, it's really something we do um, from different angles. So, yeah, that's, that's my yeah, thought about this question. Thank you. And I think it's also very important to communicate to the public when we are doing these art science projects and to educate the public how this could be benefit to the society. Um, so um, I'm actually quite uh, curious about um, how the cross uh, institutional collaborations work within the uh, university. Uh, so this is more, I guess, more for Professor Zhao. Uh, is it easy for the students to have access to the research labs? Uh, definitely. Actually, so for the uh, Institute of Art and Science in Tsinghua University, we have a, a very good facility there. And uh, so hopefully uh, the, after the pandemic, so if uh, international traveling uh, available, we would like to invite the uh, all the student professors from the different uh, universities uh, around the world to to come to join the uh, the uh, research pro uh, project in the in our uh, in our institute and uh, uh, especially during the summer school we can conduct the uh, workshop uh, you know to uh, you know the, to 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 promote the the I mean the multi culture and the multidisciplinary collaboration between different uh, institutions and uh, uh, with the different cultural background. And for the uh, individual artists, like do they oh. have access to those labs? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Okay, because I'm asking because I'm, I sometimes would uh, talk to those young artists who would like to start like collaboration with scientists, and um, it's often very difficult for them to to have access to to the labs and to to uh, collaborate with the scientists. So yeah, just out of curious in asking this question. Um, yeah, I think we still have one question here from the audience. Uh, it's also from. Uh, um, from uh, Alexa to Professor Zhao. Uh, science and arts are still very separate in the US. And what can we learn that has made it more successful in China? Uh, uh, to be honest, Lee, so uh, I think the, uh, this, uh, 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 this is, uh, is also the challenge uh, for, the, uh, chi uh, for the Chinese uh, uh, society. So uh, the art and the science uh, uh, is still uh, separate uh, in China as well. So what we are going to do uh, in our uh, institute, as I mentioned in my presentation, is we want to uh, establish a different uh, joint research uh, laboratories. 
uh, and invited uh, uh, you know the scientists and uh, artists or designers are working together. So that's our uh, goal to promote the uh, uh, multidisciplinary uh, collaboration in the in one platform. So I think that should be uh, good for the uh, you know the the uh, good for the the collabor uh, collaboration between the art and the science. Thank you. And uh, um, Monica, if you have any questions to Professor Zhao or any additional mm, I, comments on the questions? Yeah, maybe maybe an additional comment to to the the, the last question. Uh, I think I think it's not easy to 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 establish or and to and to run an art and science program. I I think it's it, um, I think there are still man, many challenges and. Um, uh, and many of them are, um, yeah, being, you need to be an ambassador to to, to the, the purpose, why we do this. So as a curator, there is a big role on, on yeah, insisting on the on these precious moments and exchanges that are created through um, um, the art and science dialogue. So I think it's, Another challenge is funding as well. So you uh, you have to support the artists as professionals. They are not visitors, and this is not um, a reach to, to to broad audience that delivers a message and then they leave. You know, the impact is important and needs to be assessed and taken uh, into account. And then I think science is so present in our life and is uh, telling us what nature is today that is urgent, that there are other voices that add to the narrative or create new imaginations around it. And um, so th there are many challenges, but it's, it's, it's a good moment for art and science, especially because we see that the institutes of research as in the Tsinghua University and many other places in China. I'm, I'm very impressed that uh, there are so many students and designers, art, um, artists and designers in China dedicated to this. Uh, but the, we need to respond to this demand. It's a very, it's, it's, it's a great moment, but are we able to do this? Do we have the competences, the capacities to do it? So there are still, yeah, this, yeah, these moments of uncertainty. So we need to support each other with networks. It's, it's clear to me. Yeah, sure. That's why we brought you together. And uh, <laughs> I think that's also uh, what we value a lot to, to have the dialogue between between like different people and different group. And we will also support uh, in the future. Um, so as we are slowly reaching the time limit, we will uh, close the discussion now. Um, but for our audience, uh, we will uh, send out the recording link and also the slides to all of you after the talk. And uh, on the slide, you can see our uh, social media channels. Uh, you may follow us on our social media channels to stay tuned on our uh, further updates. So thank you today uh, for being with us and also thanks to our speakers. And uh, we wish you a good evening here in Shanghai and also a good day, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us today and looking forward to see you again in our next event. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs>